Statements in this presentation relating to Oracle's future plans, expectations, beliefs, intentions, and prospects are forward-looking statements and are subject to material risks and uncertainties. A detailed discussion of these factors and other risks that affect our business is contained in our SEC filing, including our most recent reports on Form 10-K and Form 10-Q, particularly under the heading Risk Factors. This presentation is intended to outline our general product direction. It is intended for information purposes only and may not be incorporated into any contract. It is not a commitment to deliver any material code or functionality and should not be relied upon in making purchasing decisions. The development, release, and timing of any features or functionality described for Oracle's products remains at the sole discretion of Oracle. Please welcome Larry Ellison. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're, uh, we're here this afternoon to talk about the latest developments in our autonomous database technology. Uh, back at Oracle Open World last year, we announced the Oracle Autonomous Database, the world's first and only autonomous database. And then in March of this year, we delivered the first version of that for production use for data warehousing. So this was optimized uh, to run high performance queries. Uh, so we can handle data warehouses, data marts, data lakes, any, any large aggregation of data, go in and inquire about that data and return results in an optimal fashion. The cool thing about it was because it was autonomous, the database, you know, it was fully automated. Uh, human beings didn't create the database. Uh, the database is created itself. Human beings didn't tune the database. The database tuned itself. We were able to do that for data warehousing and data marts back in March of this year. And now we're announcing the immediate availability of the Oracle Autonomous Database for transaction processing. So now the, this machine learning based technology not only can optimize itself for queries for database, for, for database warehouses and uh, data marts, but we can also optimize, it also optimizes itself for transactions. So it can run batch programs, uh, reporting, Internet of Things, simple transactions, complex transactions, all of it, and, and mixed workloads. So between these two systems, the system that optimi is optimized for data warehousing and the system that's optimized for transaction processing, the Oracle Auton Autonomous Database now handles all of your workloads, all of them. Okay, the Oracle Autonomous Database Everything, infrastructure, the database, the data center, everything is automated. There's nothing to learn and there's nothing to do. Uh, think about this. How hard is it to learn to drive a self-driving car? <laughs> what kind of class do you take to, you know, who do you hire to teach you to drive a self-driving car. How long does it take to learn? I mean, it's kind of, I mean, it seems strange, but there's nothing to learn. If you want to use the Oracle Autonomous Database, you know what you have to learn? Nothing. So uh, the same thing with a self-driving car. Now, when you get in that self-driving car, how hard is it to drive? What do you need to do to drive that self-driving? Well, you have to tell, you, tell it where you want to go. You tell it where you want to go, and then you uh, take a nap or browse, browse the web or read a book or whatever. Uh, so I know it sounds strange. Nothing to learn, nothing to do. One of the interesting things about database technology is 
There are IT experts that specialize in relational databases, like Oracle, and they learn how to drive these things. And uh, the traditional IT developer probably is not an expert at database, or the Oracle database, or any database. In fact, one of the reasons NoSQL databases are popular is because they're very easy to learn and use. It was the simplicity, you know, the fact that you didn't have to learn a lot in order to use a NoSQL database. It did a lot less, it, excuse me, it, it does, we have NoSQL databases, God bless you if you wanna use them. Uh, but the real attraction to the traditional developer to using a NoSQL database was there wasn't much to learn. It was get, put, very simple. The Oracle database was, you know, very complicated to learn how to, how to create a database and how to manage the database and do all that. That's all gone now. Now we're as simple to use as the simplest databases on the planet. No SQL databases. There's nothing to learn, there's nothing to do. We're much easier to use than any other relational database or object database or columnar database or what have you. Uh, we are now the easiest database in the world to use because again, I'll say it again, nothing to learn, nothing to do. And when there's nothing to learn and nothing to do, uh, it's much lower, there's much less labor associated with running this database, so it's much, much lower in cost. In fact, it's the lowest cost database to operate. Okay, another reason why the Oracle uh, database is so low cost to operate is that it's truly elastic. I know that Amazon calls its cloud the, you know, the elastic, EC2, elastic cloud, uh, elastic compute, compute cloud. But their databases are not elastic. Let me explain how this works. So when you create an Oracle database, the system automatically provisions itself. In other words, it allocates storage. It allocates network capacity. It allocates compute capacity and memory automatically allocates that stuff. But then when you start to run your application, let's say you're not using all of that capacity. You don't really need that capacity. It's the load, let's say in the middle of the night, is very low. Well, if the load is very low, Oracle will start deallocating servers and deallocating servers. When Oracle's not running, when the, when the application isn't running, there is no server, there are zero servers allocated to the database. It's what's called serverless cloud or serverless system. And as you need capacity near the end of a month or the end of a quarter or a busy, you know, busy shopping day or what have you, it will automatically add servers while the system is still running. So as Oracle starts to slow down because more and more people log on and there are more and more transactions, it automatically adds another server it automatically adds additional network I.O., an additional I.O. capacity when it adds a server. It will automatically scale itself up as the, as the demands on the system go up, so performance is sustained, and will automatically scale itself down, so when there isn't a lot of demand on the system, you're not paying for what you don't use. Amazon's databases can't do that they can't dynamically add a server when the system is running. They can't dynamically add network capacity. They, can't, they don't, can't dynamically take a server away when there's not demand, and it's not serverless when it's idle. So this is the case, it's a truly elastic system. You only pay for the infrastructure that you use. That's one reason why we can guarantee to cut your Amazon infrastructure bill in half. We're not talking about the total cost of ownership. We're not talk about, talking about the part, yeah, yeah, we get rid of all the labor. No, that's, that's, that's in addition. This is just the plain infrastructure, the cost of compute, networking, and storage. Just the infrastructure bill you get from Amazon to run either of their databases, Aurora or, or Redshift. Just the infrastructure cost, we cut that bill in half. And of course, we eliminate virtually all of the labor, which is an even bigger savings. Truly elastic, you only pay for what you use. All right, uh, 
Last year at Open World, I did a bunch of benchmarks where I compared the Oracle database running a data uh, warehouse to Redshift. And there were all of these benchmarks, and we were between, actually closer to 10 times than five times, but we were, we were, we were consistently between five and 10 times faster than Redshift. And that was on the identical hardware configurations. Same hardware configurations. We were five to 10 times faster. Well, if you're five times faster, and you charge by the minute. So, you know, if we do in six seconds what they do in a minute, we're not just five, you know, we're just not 10 times faster. We're 10 times cheaper, because you're charging by the minute. These performance advantages translate into dramatically lower costs, because you charge by the minute. If we, run, if we, we, if we can do the same amount of work in half the time, we're half the price. If we can do the same amount of work in a quarter of the time, we do, we're a quarter of the price. And the case of Amazon uh, data warehouse with Redshift versus Oracle's data warehouse, autonomous data warehouse, we were between five to 10 times faster, five to 10 times cheaper. That's why it's actually very easy for us to guarantee, give you a written guarantee that we cut your Amazon bill in half. You take your existing Redshift application, bring it over to Oracle, we'll guarantee that your cost, your bill, will be cut in half. Well, how did we do in transaction processing? That was then, this is now. How did we do in transaction processing? Well, Amazon has two separate databases, one designed for query processing, data warehousing, that's Redshift. They have another one that's designed for tr online transaction processing. And that's called Aurora. How did we do against Aurora? Well, in the very simplest case, the best we could get out of Aurora, you know, Aurora at its best is one twelfth as fast as Oracle. This is when Aurora is really doing what, this is what, what I guess Amazon would show if they were showing these slides. Uh, that Aurora was only, you know, because the second you, you have a mixed workload on Aurora, we're more you know, more than 100 times faster than Amazon. And you can see that our transaction rate from pure transaction processing went from 18,300 to 18,100 when you added the mixed workload. You saw Amazon degraded quite a bit more. You know, they have to have one database that's pretty good at query processing, one great database. Well, I wouldn't say it's not, it actually isn't that good at query processing. It's okay, you know, it's the best thing they've got for query processing. And then they got, and Aurora is the best thing they got for transaction processing. Neither one is very good, but when you put a mixed workload on one of them, when you have a combination of transactions and queries, it's really not, I mean, 100 times slower is not good. <laughs> Let me back, back up one, please. Can you back up the slide, please? Thank you. And so the second line. AWS has been around for a decade. See, it's been here for 10 years. Amazon Web Services has been here for 10 years. Amazon runs their business on Oracle. Now, they said they made a big announcement. Actually, they made a big announcement after I said, hey, Amazon's one of our best references. They just gave us another $50 million for the Oracle database. <laughs> and, you know, the, they thought they don't like being our best reference. <laughs> They, they think of themselves as a competitor. So it's kind of embarrassing when Amazon uses Oracle, but they want you to use Aurora and Redshift. And they say, oh yeah, Re AWS is great. We got Aurora, we got Redshift. What do you use? Uh, don't, don't, don't ask. <laughs> don't ask. And then they say, oh no, but now they make a big announcement. We're gonna move by 2020. We think we can get off Oracle. By 2020, we think we can get off Oracle. Well, you know, it's interesting. They've had 10 years to get off Oracle, and they're still on Oracle. And it's not going to be easy for them to use their own technology. It's not going to be cost effective. I mean, it's really, really hard. We've had other competitors. You know, competitors don't like being our best references. 
Amazon doesn't like being our best, one of our best references. I, I'm not going to pick on our, our, our good customers. SAP is another big competitor. A decade ago, they came up with HANA, their own database, and they said they're going to get off Oracle. They're getting everything off of Oracle, and they're going to run on HANA. Ten years later, they're still running on Oracle. All of their cloud, all their cloud applications are running on Oracle. Virtually all of their customers run on, or, you know, you know, ERP customers run on Oracle. It's a really good database. It's a really good database, so good that our competitors, our competitors are some of our best references. At one point, I know there were articles in the newspaper, I don't know what Salesforce was thinking, but there were articles in the newspaper where the Salesforce is gonna move off of Oracle, and they're testing Postgres, and they're testing this, and they're testing DBG, they're testing all of this stuff. No, call them. They're not getting off of Oracle. It is by far the best database in the world, and it just got a lot better because now it's autonomous. It's not gonna be easy. First 10 years, Amazon couldn't get off of Oracle. I think we should watch them very closely. They got a goal to get off by 2020. SAP couldn't do it. Salesforce couldn't do it. I don't think they can do it. Anyway, we'll find out. Uh, okay, so next thing. Not only is Oracle much faster and much lower cost to operate, it also protects your data. It protects your data against data theft and cyber attacks of any, of any kind, but most importantly, against data theft. The terrible thing about when your data is stolen, you, sometimes if you're the CEO, you get your name on the front, in the front page of a newspaper. That's not good. You don't want your name on the front page of a newspaper. You don't want your data to be stolen. The Oracle Autonomous Database automates a great deal of data security. Uh, we have continuous monitoring to try to detect a threat or some kind of intrusion. So we're constantly monitoring to, you know, to check for, again, a, a threat, a vulnerability, an intrusion. The moment a threat is detected, the system has the ability to automatically patch itself while the system is still running. There's no system in the world that can do this other than Oracle. Automatic threat detection and automatic remediation while the system is still running. You know, normal systems, other systems, you have to schedule downtime. You have to take the system down and then patch the system. So you have to find all the systems that you have. You have to locate all the systems. Not easy. People have thousands or tens of thousands of databases, believe it or not, uh, large companies. But even, you know, but they're, it's very difficult just to keep track of all of them, take them down, make sure they're patched. When this is a manual process, you know, human beings make errors. When it's a manual process, it's a risky process. Now it's completely automated and it's immediate. The system while running, we don't need downtime, while the system is running, it automatically patches itself and closes a security vulnerability. We don't have to take the system down to patch. In fact, we don't have to take the system down to upgrade from one version of Oracle to the next version of Oracle. We don't have to take the system down to scale, to add another server to the workload. In fact, your downtime, your downtime should be less than two and a half minutes every month. That's what we'll guarantee. Again, we will guarantee that we have 99.995% availability. We'll be up, including for maintenance and patching, you know, adding servers, everything. By the way, that, that includes the operating system. We can, we can patch, patch the OS while the system is running. That includes all downtime, everything. You're only down two and a half minutes guaranteed. Amazon can't do any of this stuff. That's why we're at least 100 times more reliable than they are. To patch, to scale, to, do, to upgrade, to do any of that stuff, they've got to take the system down. We don't, we do it while it's running. Therefore, the system is virtually always available. <sighs> A server fails. 
the server fails, and your application keeps running. The system is fault tolerant. The server fails. Let's say there's a database software bug. A database software bug, it happens. You know, and, the, and therefore, one of the database servers fails, but not because the hardware failed, because the software failed. No problem, your application keeps running. We have multiple servers working, you know, with Oracle, Oracle Rack, Oracle Parallel Server. We have multiple servers working on, you know, supporting your workload. So when there's a failure like that, the application doesn't even see it. Transaction just fails over automatically, application keeps running. Amazon can't do that. They can't do anything like that. Um, everything, so we tolerate. In other words, we don't, just because there's a hardware failure, the system keeps running. We tolerate that failure. When there's a software failure, the system keeps running. We tolerate that failure. And because everything is automated, the system is autonomous, there are no human errors. Either accident, no human accidents and no human malice. You know, no mischief, no mistakes, all goes away because of automation. Amazon doesn't have that. Amazon's databases aren't autonomous. They can't tolerate hardware failures like that, or a database server failure. They can't tolerate that. Again, uh, there's more reasons, more reasons why Oracle is 100 times more reliable than Amazon. We've been working on these problems for a very, very long time. I'm not gonna take you through this slide, <laughs> you know. Uh, but just to say, just even since, since version nine of the database, and obviously there are versions that came before that, we have been doing all sorts, adding all sorts of features and functions to automate the Oracle software, to make it on, on this journey to autonomous. We've been working on this for a very long time. And finally with 18C, it's autonomous. And by the way, version 19C, which I will talk about right at the end of, my, of the presentation, is due out end of this year. So we have another version coming out very, very soon. So we continue to work, you know, work in, in delivering you know, all sorts of real cool things. But with 18C, we are fully autonomous now for data warehousing and transaction processing. But it's not sufficient. It is not sufficient just to make the database autonomous. The database runs on compute and storage and networking. Someone's got to manage all of that. And it can be you, it could be us, or better yet, it, it could be the system, the software, the machine, lear machine learning. It, the, this, this also could be made autonomous. And that's what we've done. We've been working on, on special, you know, adding all sorts of capabilities to the software, the underlying software and hardware that Oracle runs on, operating systems. Uh, parallel server, things like Exadata, in, you know, interconnects, all this stuff. We have, you not only have to make the database autonomous, but you have to have the full automated capability on the underlying infrastructure as well. And then you're still not done because you have to then automate the processes in the data center. So to have a true, you know, for the, have an Oracle autonomous database, it's really made up of three separate big components. The database software itself in the middle, but the underlying infrastructure has to be autonomous, and the, uh, and the overall cloud, the management of the overall cloud also has to be autonomous. It has to be autonomous, has to be reliable, has to be secure. To deliver that, those numbers, uh, those performance numbers, those availability numbers, you have to have all three pieces of the puzzle. Okay, how does it work? Well, it automatically provisions itself and we provision, it provisions, the autonomous database runs on this Exadata server. I mean, Exadata is a very interesting architecture. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but it uses Intel, Intel processors. It uses, if you will, standard two socket Intel servers, but has a very fancy interconnect, how they're interconnected. It has uh, some very fancy network security built, you know, in it. It has you know, some very fancy reli you know, reliability so software and hardware. Uh, but it, we, we run on Exadata, which is really a parallel server structure. 
And I'll, I'll, I'll show you that in, in the next slide. So, but it runs on our latest, fastest, autonomous infrastructure. And we use Rack, Real Application Clusters, Parallel Server, what, what it used to be known as. But it's a parallel scale-out system. So your workload, whenever you're running an application, you never have one and only one server running the database. You always have at least two servers running the database. So if one fails, the other one picks up. And by the way, if one fails and another one picks up, a third one, a third one is quickly allocated. You're never, you have no single points of failure in the system. The Exadata system is designed so there are no single points of failure so we can tolerate network, network losses, Server, you know, server losses, all of that with the application keep running. Uh, it's secure, uh, much more secure than other systems. I, I mentioned before how it automatically detects and then patches while running uh, vulnerabilities. Another thing it does, you totally unique to Oracle, one big problem virtually all databases have is that the, tech, the techies who create the database, the DBAs who create the database, can see the user data inside the database. Maybe you don't want our programmers to know what's inside your database. So with Oracle, that's not the case. With Oracle, you know, we really have the separation of duties. Uh, the people who, cre you know, who create the database, if you will, the DBAs who kind of manage the technology cannot see the user data. That is not true in the Amazon databases. The people who create the databases can see the user data. That's a huge security vulnerability, enormous vulnerability that Oracle does not have. And of course, we encrypt all the data in the net, you know, the data at rest and the data uh, when it's moving in the network. Again, uh, we patch all the software while the system is running, not just the database. If you can't patch, if there, what about an, if there's an OS bug or an OS vulnerability? You better be able to patch that too. So we've been, you know, uh, you know our version of Linux, uh, we've been working on, a lot of people say, why is Oracle working on a version of Linux? There are eight, you know, there are lots of versions of Linux. Why, why create one more? Well, we created one more uh, for a variety of reasons. Performance was one reason. Uh, security, uh, security was another reason. We have to be able to patch that software while the system is still running. Because if all we can patch the database, we, otherwise we can't handle, handle the vulnerability. We've got to be able to do all of it. So it's, that's why we had to have a, automate the database and also automate the underlying infrastructure, including the operating system, VMs, and all that other stuff. Okay. And patch it and, and obviously manage it automatically. All right, uh, we, uh, we automatically back up the database. And it's, you know, depending on the policies you set, you set a policy, you could back it up to the same data center, you're probably gonna back it up to a different, a separate data center. Uh, we, you know, keep, uh, you know, if you, if you select Active Data Guard, we run Active Data Guard in, a, in another data center, uh, and we do that. Uh, so. The system is highly, highly reliable. And all, again, all of this stuff is automated. The scalability, I mentioned earlier, you never have, you can see this, as you need more capacity, chunk, here comes another server, here comes another server, here comes another server. Then you don't need it, it goes away, it goes away. It goes, nobody does this. So you only pay for the stuff that you use. It truly is elastic. There is not, nobody but Oracle can do this because of how we do parallel server and how, how, how our architecture works with, with Rack or parallel server. It really is truly pay for what you use. Uh, it's, the system automatically tunes and optimizes itself. So it automatically creates and drops indexes. It automatically rebuilds query plans. It, and you'll, you'll see in 19C we've added, we've added something really cool. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but everyone's very excited about this. But it, we have autonomous regression testing, if you will. It automatically tests itself to make sure nothing can ever go slower. You know, as we tune new versions of the database, this is kind of a little inside baseball, but, uh, but as we make the database faster with new versions, 
and we tune 1,000 queries, 999 of them run faster, one runs slower, and someone gets very upset about the one that runs slower. And that will never happen again. Now, with autonomous, uh, with 19C, it checks the new query plans to make sure that if they're not faster, we'll use the old query plan. It's just autonomous regression. There can be no more regressions. The system will make sure that never happens again. That's 19C. You've got to wait till the end of the year for that. But, but again, we continue to opt, you know, optimize and automate even back to automating testing. OK, so uh, specialized workloads. Auto, uh, automated data warehousing is designed for very complicated queries uh, uh, versus uh, automated tra uh, autonomous transaction processing. It's for OLTP. Uh, the data is stored differently. You know, as the system optimizes itself, as, we, as the machine learns about how to tune itself, as machine learning works, uh, for the automated data warehouse, we use a columnar format. The data is stored in column forms. Uh, with transaction processing, it's rows. Uh, in the case of you know, some, some of the optimizations, this is just a few, a few examples. Uh, so one of the optimizations for, uh, for uh, data warehousing is we'll see if, you, if you're constantly asking the same query over and over again, we'll pre-compute the query. You know, and, we'll, and we'll keep it around. So the next time we don't have to compute. We can just say, you just, you just asked that question or someone else just asked that question. Here's the result. You get it instantaneously. So you know, it creates data, you know, data summaries. Uh, in the case of OLTP, the toughest thing is getting data off of your storage device, probably flash these days, not disk, but get it from, get it from storage and into memory. And to do that very fast, there's a technique called RDMA. It's just reading directly into memory, not, by, not having a long code path to go through. Anyway, these are examples of performance optimizations for and how they're different between transaction processing and data warehousing. And now the machine learning, the machine has learned how to do both with the latest version of the Oracle database. Uh, OK. There are lots of benefits. Uh, you don't, we upgrade the OS for you. Uh, if the OS has a security vulnerability, we patch it for you automatically. We keep it up to date. So you know that your version of the database and your version of the OS and your version of the VM have all of the latest security patches on them and that we're constantly monitoring for new vulnerabilities. And if, they, if one shows up, we immediately patch that. There's no delay. And we do that you know, across the board. Uh, so I know some people say, oh my god, all this is automated. What, what, yeah, I'm a DBA. I've been an Oracle expert for years. Am I, you know, am, am I up for early retirement? Uh, so I got some bad news for you. No early retirement. Uh, your job, I mean, a lot of the tedious things you were doing, allocating disk storage and you know, um, upgrading the OS, is, you don't have to do that. However, there's lots more to do. Uh, we, you'd be able to uh, work with the developers to you know, create new applications, uh, uh, improve the analytics. Uh, do you do a better job with data, you know, data design? I mean, CIOs are called chief information officers. You know, because they're trying to get the most out of the company's information. DBAs should be helping, you know, our database administrators, they administer the data. They should be marching exactly in the same direction, trying to maximize the value of the data, create more applications, uh, improve the analytics, improve the insights available to the company on the data. They shouldn't just be patching the operating system. They shouldn't just be adding more storage buying more storage and doing all of that. It's nice to automate the tedious stuff away so you can focus on the mission, which is to get the most out of your data and build new applications for your customers. Uh, and of course, by not having human beings doing some of the tedious clerical work in terms of running the database, if you eliminate human labor, you also eliminate human error. And your system is much safer, much more reliable, much more secure. 
Okay, uh, I mentioned this earlier. Developers who are not database experts now can use the Oracle database. It's now the easiest database in the world to use. Uh, so a developer does, is not dependent on a database expert to set, set the database up for them. And they, you know, they can do it, they can get started right away. They can create their own database. Uh, they don't have to rely on other people to tune, to tune their application. The application will tune itself. Uh, and this makes developers and IT organizations dramatically more productive. And that's a huge benefit. I mean, uh, productivity, being able to get your applications out sooner, those applications being more reliable, more performant, having better UIs, all of that stuff is made possible by using the most advanced autonomous database. And it's very easy, by the way, if you're, if you're using Amazon Aurora, and we encourage you to do this, to go from Amazon Aurora uh, to move over to Oracle Autonomous Database, or uh, Azure SQL, micro, that's uh, you know, Microsoft's product, or Mongo. It's very easy to simply use our migration tools to pump the data from these manual databases into the Oracle Autonomous Database. It's fascinating. Most people who are breached, most people who suffer data theft, suffer data theft long after the vulnerability was known about and a patch was available to fix the vulnerability. I mean, it's, and that makes it all the more embarrassing and costly. Uh, so the great thing about the Oracle Autonomous Database the second a vulnerability is detected, the system patches, finds all the versions of the database that are vulnerable, and immediately patches them. There is no time delay. And you know they've all been patched because the system patched them. You weren't, rel you weren't reliant upon some manual process to schedule the appropriate downtime to get your database secured. The detection of the vulnerability is automatic. The remediation, the patching is automatic and immediate. OK. You'll see the number 99.995 all over the place. Um, it's highly, highly available. Uh, failures. Uh, we tolerate hardware failures. We tolerate software failures. We eliminate human errors. Uh, the database. You get a new version of Oracle. So let's say, you know, we're, I said we're on 18C now, or the autonomous database out at the end, comes out at the end of the year is 19C. And okay, well, how much downtime do I have to schedule to move from 18C to 19C? I've got to change all the database software. How much downtime? None. None. Because we have multiple servers running your application, multiple database servers, what happens is, let's say, let's say you only have two. You could have two, four, 16, whatever. But let's say you have the minimum, you have two, uh, uh, running on Exadata. What happens is we take one down, upgrade the software from 18 to 19, bring it back up, take the other one down, upgrade from 18 to 19, bring it back up, and you're running. So what happens is for a little while you're running on one server. Actually, that's not, even that's not true because you have another one in reserve. You have, you're, you're, you're always fault tolerant. So, you, so if during that upgrade there's a failure in the server you're still running, you'll fail over to another 18C server. So you can argue there's always three, there is always at least, you know, conceptually there's always at least three servers uh, when, you, when we're doing the upgrade. But we can upgrade, change the software while the application's still running, no scheduled downtime. Uh, the system constantly is tuning itself. This is another thing. So, so um, it's not, typically when an application is built by a developer and then the database expert goes in and tunes the application, once it's tuned, it goes live, it's tuned and it's, and it's live. Uh, after a while, a week, months, couple years, the database might have gotten a lot larger. The distribution of the data could have changed. Uh, the tuning that was done initially might not be appropriate for the current situation. There could be more users, more data, different distribution of data, all this other stuff. 
the Oracle Autonomous Database continuously tunes itself. It's not like one off in the beginning, then maybe once every year or something like that. It's constant, continuously tuning itself. This makes it faster and much cheaper to operate because we're, uh, because we're optimizing both for performance and using a minimum amount of infrastructure to get that performance. And you just pay for the infrastructure you use. Uh, we even handle, we even protect against user errors. Uh, let's say someone by mistake deletes, you know, a thousand customers. All the begin, you know, last names begin with E. Um, I think like Amazon will probably delete my account. I better, <laughs> today I'll probably, I, fortunately I have, a, I have, I just bought the latest Kindle, so it's a great product. <laughs> so. If someone makes a mistake and deletes data they shouldn't have deleted, we have the, this, this thing called flashback queries that allows you to go back, go back to earlier versions of the database, not backups, you know, earlier, you know, earlier versions of, of, a, of a specific query result and recover that data. They don't have anything like that. So we have the ability to even protect against user errors, whether they're mis honest mistakes or done with malicious intent. We handle all of those situations. Makes us much more reliable, much more secure, and much more available. Okay. Again, I think I, I said this before, very easy to move uh, an Oracle database uh, into the cloud. Uh, an on-premise database into the cloud or move MySQL or Postgres or you know, something else into the cloud. Uh, you simply use our data pump, uh, which uh, will make the appropriate data format conversions, make sure the data is encrypted, uh, remove administrative privileges that create security vulnerabilities, does all of, the, all of those things. And uh, the fact, and, and, and we use Golden Gate, uh, our Golden Gate technology to make sure even during the migration, your system is accessible and your system can keep running. Okay, so the lowest cost database to run. If you're an existing Oracle customer, if you already have Oracle licenses, you don't have to buy any Oracle database software. You already own Oracle database software. So if you have on-premise licenses, you can reuse those licenses. There's nothing to buy. There's no, no database software to buy. You just reuse those licenses in our cloud. You continue to pay support, but those database licenses are now in the cloud. They're not on-premise. So there's no additional software cost. All you pay for is the infrastructure that you use. And again, we, we're very good at minimizing the amount of infrastructure you use because we automatically scale up and scale down. It truly is elastic. And because of the, that elasticity, uh, you only pay, pay for what you use, we can reduce your costs dramatically. I know we guarantee 50%. We guarantee 50%. We can do a lot better than that. Our experience has shown we've, you know, we cut costs a lot more than 50%. Uh, just on infrastructure alone. And then uh, the, the, the fact that we eliminate the labor, that we eliminate the labor is even a bigger deal. I'll go to the next slide. I mean, this is really more important than cutting your Amazon infrastructure bill by 50% or 60% or 70% or 80%, whatever it is. It's gonna be more than 50 for sure. Uh, but the biggest deal is all of that labor is now goes to zero. All of that cost, all, and all of those valuable human resources, all of those experts, those database experts, can now be working on uh, building new applications, building, creating new databases, getting better, improving your analytics, getting better insights about your business. Those precious resources, which are in short supply, can be redeployed for more useful tasks than allocating storage and allocating, you know, and buying network cards and doing those, buying and those kind of things. There's huge amount of cost in downtime. When you, when you have to, uh, 
uh, it can be an extraordinary cost. If, if you have to schedule downtime to patch a security vulnerability, and you, your data is still in between the time you scheduled the downtime and you, and you did the patch, the cost can be extraordinary. But just downtime in general, downtime for maintenance, downtime, you know, downtime because of hardware failures, downtime because of software failures, downtime because of patching, all of that downtime is very expensive. It has to be scheduled. Uh, there's a lot of costs associated with it. Those costs go away. There are no costs. And of course, the productivity, back to the productivity of your people who are no longer doing administrative tasks, but again, are building the next generation application with the next generation voice UI, with the next generation visualization and analytics, freeing up the resources to innovate uh, rather than administrate, makes, us, makes all, of, all of the users more, more effective. Okay, you can try it for free. Uh, it's, it's immediately available. Uh, just log on, log on to our cloud and, get a, uh, and, and give it a test drive. Uh, I think you'll like it. The, okay, I'm gonna take, I'm, gonna I'm almost done. I'm gonna take two minutes. I mean, everything I've talked about so far is available immediately. We have it. Aut autonomous transaction processing, autonomous data warehouse, all of this stuff is available now. I am gonna get, do a little bit of a teaser. I'll talk about this uh, at Oracle Open World, and that's the new version of Oracle 19C, which I think will be out before, it's supposed to be out in 2019, but you know, we've already named it 19C, but it might be out in 2018, I hope you forgive us. Uh, so, you know, it's gonna be out either at the end of this year or worst case, January next year. Uh, one of the th coolest things you don't have to read the slide. One of the coolest things is this idea that as you upgrade to 19C, there will be no performance regressions, no query plan performance regressions. So we think all your queries will run faster except the ones that run the same. And that's the worst case, is running the same. Because we'll literally, as we run the application, run those queries for the first time, we'll kind of run side by, you know, we'll run kind of a test side by side of those things. The old query plan, the new query plan, if the new query plan's faster, great, you get the new query plan. The old query plan is faster, you keep the old query plan. No more performance regression testing. That's a huge effort that our, our, our customers have to make to upgrade from one, between one version of our database and another. Is all this, all this testing for regressions for you know, where the system has gotten worse, not better. Uh, system does that for you, know, for you now in 19C. Uh, how, good, how good is our automated tuning? I mean, interesting question. Uh, with 19C, we did, you know, we, we, we did this very interesting test. We took an enormously complicated system uh, with high quality experts tuning it over a long period of time. And that's the NetSuite ERP system, the NetSuite cloud ERP system. And actually, straight out of the box, right now, current state of 19C, straight out of the box, is slightly faster, slightly faster than what all of the experts were able to do over the last 20 years. So it's had, this has had 20 years of expert tuning. This is their business making this system run fast, and they've had lots of experience with lots of different users. I mean, they have thousands and thousands of companies on this thing. I think 20,000 companies, something like that, you know, using the CRP system. And already the expert system is a little better than the 20 years of expert tuning that's gone into it. It's kind of remarkable. And, it's, and, it just, and the machine's just gonna get smarter and smarter and smarter. The, uh, other thing we're offering with 19C is the ability, give you, giving you a choice between what I've described in 18C as the serverless system. Again, the serverless system is you go ahead and you provision the system, uh, but when the, the system's not running, you, you, have, you haven't reserved anything specifically for you. You're on this, in this pool of Exadata machines. Uh, again, it's a cloud. There are other tenants in the cloud. It's a multi-tenant system. There are other tenants in the cloud. So uh, when your, your application is running, you're using some member of those Exadata servers, uh, and when your application is not running, you're using zero, none of those servers. And you only pay for what you use. 
And we think a lot of people want exactly that. It automatically scales up and scales down. We think a lot of people want that. However, we think some of our largest customers are going to say, ah, you know, I don't want to share, I don't want to share my exit data with anybody. I don't want any other companies on this machine or on this network. I don't want any noisy neighbors. I don't want anyone near me. I want to rent the entire neighborhood myself. When I'm not in my house, don't rent it. Don't put it on an Airbnb. I own it. <laughs> Keep everyone out. No one touch it. So we give you, um, we give the ability to have dedicated infrastructure. Say, OK, I want to get five exadata machines or 20 exadata machines, and I want them absolutely dedicated to my bank or my phone company or what, or what have you. And then our customers then have the ability to partition up their, their workloads using our container database. And there are all sorts of things they can do. But, it, then, it, but then it belongs only to that phone company, only to that, uh, to, uh, to that bank. And you're not even sharing the network. You don't even share the, you know, the, the, the network between the, the, the computer, the, uh, the compute system, and the storage system. You're the only one on that part of the network. It is dedicated to you. The network is, the storage is, the compute is. You can partition it uh, the, uh, the way you want. Nobody else, no other cloud, offers this kind of isolation inside of their public cloud. So again, we're giving these two choices. You can have the multi-tenant system where you're really optimizing for uh, lowest cost. In other words, if you're not using the server, let someone else use it. I don't care, you know, I'm fine, fine with me. And I think most of our customers will kind of end up that way. But I think some of our biggest customers will, will like this idea of absolutely dedicated, isolated, that's my storage, that's my network, that's, that's my compute, I'm the only one using that. But you got a choice, we offer both. And, okay, and that's what I just said. And I think this is pretty much my last slide. And clouded customer. So some of our, again, some of our very, very large customers, because of statutory requirements, really don't want to be in a public cloud at all. Even the, even the dedicated infrastructure, which is pretty isolated, they just, they want, all this stuff behind their own firewall. And we, okay. We can basically build the Oracle Cloud in your data center. We can put the Oracle Cloud in your data center. And you get the same autonomous capabilities. The same, you know, you get the same OS, the same VM. Uh, you get the same hardware, you know, the Exadata hardware. You get the everything is the same. Same software. So we can deliver the Oracle Autonomous Database uh, all the automatic patching, all the reliability, security, availability, and we can deliver that inside of your own data center. It's the same model. You don't buy the hardware. You know, you, you, subscribe, you, you subscribe to the hardware. You subscribe to the service. It, you just say, no, no, I, I don't want it in your cloud. I want it, I want it in my data center. I mean, there are, there are significant advantages to that. You, you have a very high-speed network. So there's, you know, there's very low, it's very low latency, high speed network because it's right in your data center. And again, some, of, some very big customers, you know, again, big phone companies, big banks, uh, are highly regulated and they want that additional level of protection. They want all of the automation in a the cloud. They want the auton autonomous capabilities of our database. They want the security, they want the reliability, but they say, well, can't you just stick that on our floor rather than in your public cloud. And we, so we take the exact, we basically take a little Oracle cloud and build it into their data center. And that's unique to Oracle. We're the only ones that are doing that, but our very largest customers have said that's the only way they're able to go to the cloud now. So we're making, making that available. And that comes with 19C. So in conclusion, uh, the Oracle Autonomous Database takes this manual process of creating and managing databases and automates the entire thing, end to end. This gives you a much more reliable system, a much more secure system, 
system that protects, protects against data theft, a system that's up 99.995% uh, of the time, and a system that makes you and your developers dramatically more productive. Thank you very much. Please welcome Steve Deweeb. Great. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, so Larry just announced the latest service as part of our Oracle Autonomous Database cloud offering, Oracle Transaction Processing. And, you know, this is part of an autonomous database uh, announcement and offering that we believe is one of the most significant in the history of Oracle, and that's saying a lot. And we believe it represents a combination of four decades worth of innovation. And we're delivering a market something that not only our competitors can't do, but something they didn't even think to do. It is that powerful. And we believe that autonomous database can actually help us reshape our approach to IT, free our budgets, free our resources, and free our imaginations to focus on innovation and driving real business growth and new business value. And we believe that we're delivering it at a perfect time for our customers, and I'm gonna be joined soon by our customers, and we're gonna hear their stories firsthand. I mean, today, the emerging technologies permeate every aspect of work and life. And these emerging technologies, whether it's AI or machine learning or IoT or blockchain or human interfaces are enabling us to embrace innovation in a way we never could before. And ultimately, it's all about us reimagining what's possible in both work and life, whether it's self-driving cars or personalized medicine or prescript prescriptive agriculture, predictive agriculture, or things like smart cities that are changing the way we experience the world around us. It's all about new possibilities, redefining how businesses run and how people both work and live. And it's ultimately about realizing these incredible opportunities that are in front of us. However, now with opportunities, you know, there comes challenges. I mean, that's just the nature of opportunity. You know, I'd say that if you're on a path that doesn't have any obstacles, it's probably not worth following. And we believe that there's no challenges that are more relevant today than security. You know, as we become more connected, the threats become more real. As we have a larger surface area, the threats become increasingly more complex and difficult to prevent. And the bad guys who are often state-sponsored actors are using the same emerging technology to wage a highly sophisticated war against us. And companies of all sizes are struggling to keep up with these persistent attacks. So how do we, how do we address these seemingly competing items? How do we reduce risk while at the same time monetize these incredible opportunities we have with respect to innovation and these emerging technologies? And the answer to that is autonomous. Autonomous allows us to fight cyber criminals. We can use machines to fight machines to reduce our risk. And autonomous also allows us to innovate, to drive new insights, to process data faster, to scale faster, to get applications to market quicker than we've ever been able to do before. Autonomous allows us to innovate while at the same time reducing risks. And for Oracle, what's important for us is to provide a simple path to autonomous for our customers. And for our customers, that path is as simple as an upgrade. I mean, with an upgrade, you can leverage your existing skill set, your existing investments. You can upgrade your, ex your experiences. You can upgrade your capabilities. Right? You can move to an autonomous AI-based future today. And for our new customers, it's a new starting point based on an innovation platform that continues to deliver and spans all three layers of cloud. So we can get them on the path to autonomous. And again, once we're on that path to autonomous, you can experience an autonomous AI-based future today, not tomorrow. We offer that to our customers today, and we're going to hear supporting stories from that. And ultimately, the Oracle Autonomous Cloud really is this new category based on machine learning. Right, and Larry talked about this. What does that allow us to do? What are the attributes of that category? How is it differentiated? It is self-driving, automatically provisioning, tuning, monitoring, upgrading. It is self-securing, automatically applying patches with no downtime. And it is self-repairing, where we can guarantee less than two and a half minutes a month of both planned and unplanned downtime. And how do those attributes relate to customer benefits? Well, with less administration, I can reduce the cost. Not only can I reduce the cost of administration, but every hour I spend on administration, I can put that towards innovation. It's really important. We can reduce risks or real costs associated with risks. 
You can avoid the actual breach cost. There's reputational damage. There's shareholder value. There's revenue losses associated with breach. We heard the incredible stat about the amount of breaches that occur even though patches are available. Imagine having a system that patches itself. And finally, it accelerates time to innovation. Right, rapid insights where I can provision a data warehouse in seconds, or I can deploy new applications in minutes. Those are the benefits that autonomous database provides. And we have many customers today who are seeing those benefits of autonomous. And while they're different sized companies and in different industries, what they have in common is they've all embraced autonomous solutions to help drive new business value. We have Hertz that went from two weeks to eight minutes to provision a database. So it allows them to get faster time to market for strategic competitive programs. We have a partner like Accenture who said the autonomous database is 14 times faster than any competitive product in the market. And we have a small Dallas based firm called QMP who's in the lab management business and they were able to reduce the time it took to get lab results from two weeks to as fast as 30 minutes. I mean, think about that, that's faster time to results that means faster time to diagnosis, which means faster time to treatment and recovery. So our customers are driving really important outcomes. And we're lucky today to have three customers who join us, you know, Gap, Drop Tank, and Data Intensity to share their experience with Oracle Cloud and their views on autonomous. So I'd like, uh, we're, I'd like them to join me on stage. And as they join me, I'd like to share a quick video with everybody in the room. intro there, huh? That was awesome. Wow. Dramatic. Great. Thank you for joining us. I'd love to go ahead and introduce the panel. Again, really thankful for uh, you joining us and participating today. First, I'm excited to introduce uh, Connie Santelli, who's GAP's Vice President of Engineering and International, and F.S. Narudin, who is GAP's Chief IT Architect. Um, GAP, as you all know, is a well-known global retailer. They offer apparel and accessories in over 90 different countries. Notable brands such as Old Navy, Banana Republic, Athleta, nice cozy pants, hopefully those come out in a men soon. Um, <laughs> you know, and so Gap is moving to the cloud to continue to innovate and differentiate, and we're gonna hear about this fast moving industry. Next, I'd like to introduce David Van Wiggeren, the CEO of Drop Tank. Drop Tank is an emerging company who's really finding new ways for legacy industries to modernize, to engage customers in new ways and drive new business growth and really new, new revenue streams. They specialize in gas station loyalty and rewards and they're now expanding to serve both airlines as well as hotel industry. Uh, David, thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. And finally, I'd like to introduce Mark Caruso, who's the CTO of Application Practice for Data Intensity. Probably the coolest name ever, Data Intensity. I just sort of like saying that. I want to get that on a t-shirt. It's a managed service uh, uh, provider uh, providing enterprise applications and data management. You have over 650 customers and you're managing 15,000 environments. Pretty incredible. And Data Intensity specializes in Oracle ERP, database management, uh, BI analytics, and as well as infrastructure. So thank you all for joining us. And Connie, I'd love to start with you. Um, you know, sort of the retail space is fascinating. And I know that fashion and retail really is changing at this rapid pace. And from our understanding of customers to sort of multi-channel engagement, to how we experience and create these new experiences for retail. And can you tell us about this new converged, you know, commerce paradigm and what opportunities it creates for you? Sure, thanks. Um, I think most people know that in the retail industry, we've had a really large disruption in terms of digital and, and what's been happening for us and our customers. Uh, all of us as customers want to shop 
anywhere, anytime, on any device. It's a 24-7 kind of demand that we have to satisfy. And so that's changed uh, the paradigm for us a little bit. And we want to be able to create this experience for our customers that's seamless between the digital experience and then carry that through in terms of the stores, which is the traditional base that we know of. So it's created a lot of change for us in terms of trying to manage that and, and to um, meet our customers in the way that they want to be met and in the way that they want to be met. They have also have expectations about more personalization and uh, things of that nature where it's changed how we start to, to leverage both of those channels and we want to be able to converge those two channels into that frictionless experience that we can carry them through both from the digital side and into the store. So it's part of that is what we call converged commerce across both channels and being able to leverage and optimize them. No, it's fantastic. Can you talk to how Oracle Cloud helps you address these opportunities uh, to differentiate and how it really helps you keep up with this pace of change that's going on in the market? Sure. A couple of years ago, uh, we started to look at, you know, like everyone who works in technology, what platforms are available to us and what can we start to leverage to start to innovate more and be able to create better opportunities in terms of the platforms and what we're able to do for our customers. And so we started to look at the opportunities that were available in the Oracle stack. And we started to, to look at being able to leverage um, all the way from SaaS down to the IS and PaaS layers in our, in our platforms. Uh, we wanted to be able to create those platforms that we could be simplified, highly resilient, highly available, so that we'd give our business the opportunity to be able to innovate and incubate in terms of uh, what we could offer from a, from a technology platform. And so we started most recently with uh, early adopter of the Oracle retail SaaS applications, mm -hmm. and then also leveraging uh, the IS and PaaS capabilities for our EPM suite in Hyperion. Well, that's fantastic, and a great example of using all three layers of the cloud. Um, at this, you know, in addition to sort of the retail cloud we talked about, how are you looking at using the PaaS and infrastructure? Like, what are some of the benefits you're seeing today, and how are you using them? So, as Connie mentioned, uh, we've had good success moving our um, retail packages, Oracle retail packages to uh, Oracle retail cloud. The real advantage we're seeing with using your IaaS and PaaS offerings is one, we can build our integration layers there so we don't have you know, our retail backends running in one place, applications and so on and so forth, and we have to kind of jerry-rig this together. So having those integration services provided as PaaS solutions as well has been very good and easy for us. Um, in addition, Along with the, the Oracle retail packages, there's a whole ecosystem of applications that go along with it to make the whole thing work. So just having the flexibility of deploying our applications close to where our, our retail packages are has been very beneficial to us. That's great. Now, you know, Larry talked about the benefits of autonomous. Uh, you know, what are some of the reasons you're looking at autonomous and what do you see as the benefits? So I think just to pick on, you know, security that, that Larry was speaking about, uh, one of the big benefits that we see is to be able to spin up and down lower environments like test uh, and dev and perf environments, and we can be sure that all of those environments are also patched and secured. Most of us are pretty good at keeping track of our production environments, but the lower environments not so much. So once we move to this platform, we are convinced, I mean, we'll be assured that all our environments, no matter where in the world they're spun up, are at par with the latest security and and other sort of vulnerabilities and are patched. That's fantastic, thank mm -hmm. you. Now, David, welcome. Um, you know, I understand that, you, again, you're creating new ways for really long-standing industries to engage with customers and really drive new revenue growth. Um, you began focused on fuel discount rewards and now are changing, you know, expanding it to multiple industries. You know, can you tell us about how cloud helped you reimagine your business? Sure. So. DropTank specializes in gas station loyalty technology and loyalty solutions, and it really started with the ability to roll back prices at the pump, and I'm sure many people have, have done that. Um, and uh, the products were very anonymous, and so there wasn't a ton of data to actually capture. But as the model has evolved, we're finding that we can drive a lot of value for our gas station networks um, by making those networks attractive to existing loyalty programs that want to engage with their members. So Fuel and C-Store typically have uh, over, you know, one time a week, on average, people are visiting uh, gas and C-Store. And so that's a real opportunity for engagement for existing programs, whether it's airline or hotel and things like that. So 
Um, as we saw that opportunity, we started saying, wow, this is, there's a ton of integration that's gonna happen here. Yeah. How are we gonna do that? So it's really, it started for us with Oracle integration cloud services. That was the starting point about a year and a half ago for us is why we got, got into the uh, uh, Oracle relationship. Years, so you're connecting over 3,500 different network locations using the integration cloud. Now, can you, can you sort of expand on that? You know, what led you to Oracle cloud and integration and ultimately autonomous as well? I know you're a user of that. Sure, so it started about four to five years ago. We had about 100 gas stations that uh, we literally had a, a black box that we would ship to the station, a Old little school. black box. <laughs> and you'd plug it into the point of sale system and it would connect to us and that's how we transacted. Uh, we tr transacted. Um, but that's a little difficult to scale. We're now at about 3,500 gas stations that we're connected to and there is no black box. There's just a direct connection to our, um, uh, actually the, uh, the Oracle system uh, that we have today. So. That was a key part of the integration. And then this new uh, loyalty solution we've rolled out for uh, uh, a major oil that's based in the Midwest and, and Southeast called Marathon Petroleum. Um, the program's called Make It Count, and it has multiple partners. So we needed to be able to integrate with an app and a website. We need to integrate with uh, loyalty processing, reward um, engine. We needed to be able to integrate with uh, our partners Southwest and La Quinta and things. So, uh, that led us to uh, the Oracle Integration Cloud Services, and then we're a small company, thinking about the future of our organization. And it's much better to start with a technology infrastructure, a platform that doesn't require a room full of DBAs, you know? Yeah. Um, nobody wants that, we don't want that. So we're looking for tools that are gonna allow us to do some amazing things at low cost and very efficiently. And so that's, that yeah. led to a And you're integrating across all these different point of sale environments and with your different partners. And from what I understand, you're gathering this all into the Oracle Autonomous da Data Warehouse, and then you're driving the analytics and kicking back to your partners trends so they can make more intelligent decisions on future promotions. Yeah, we have to. It's, it's a loyalty solution. It's driven by data. Without that data, you're going to make very inefficient decisions uh, and be less valuable to your partners, for sure. Great. Great, so integration and autonomous working together. Mark, I know you're a managed service provider focused on hybrid cloud. You know, one of the reasons we're excited to have you on the panel is you're both a customer as well as a partner. Now, I understand you're primarily focused on moving mission critical applications and workloads to the cloud. Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we've been in business since 2001. We're about 800 people globally. And we were really founded to provide 24-7 support, primarily in the Oracle ecosystem. So we started out with Oracle Database and eBusiness Suite. And as Oracle started acquiring companies, we started supporting more and more applications. And for us, it's important, as we started expanding our own business systems, we also wanted to use the systems that we were supporting. So we're an Oracle eBusiness Suite customer. We use Oracle Business Intelligence, Oracle Database, uh, Oracle Middleware. And so in our cloud journey, as we started to, you know, to, to really kind of evolve our own offerings, we knew that customers uh, needed to have a place that they could go to be able to scale, have high performance, be secure. And for us, we knew that we needed to do that first for ourselves. So we migrated our own eBusiness Suite environment to Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, and more recently have migrated our business intelligence platform to Oracle's uh, Autonomous Analytics Cloud with an autonomous data warehouse backend. That's great. And from what I understand, you know, since you've deployed it, you've seen no downtime, and you've been able to do this with absolutely zero administration. Is that well, right? Well, it's funny because I've, I've checked in with the team, and I said, you know, how, how are things going? And they said, <laughs> it, it's going fine. We haven't, we haven't had to do anything with it. It's actually just run itself, which is a pretty good proof point. So for the last two months, you know, as we've continued to add data, add data sources, add reports, add dashboards, system is just run and it continues to respond very quickly. So we're getting the dashboard refreshes and report refreshes in, in a second or two versus yeah. what we were seeing on-prem of four or five seconds. And we were on some, some pretty cutting edge infrastructure when we were on-prem as well. Oh, that's fantastic. Can you tell us maybe a little bit more about your implementation? You know, from I understand, you got users today, but that's looking to grow by a factor of 10x in a short time frame? Yeah, like a lot of ERP customers, we, we decided to push our reporting to further in the implementation. And so we were a little bit behind, and we knew that we needed to scale up pretty quickly. So we've got about 30 users on the system right now, um, several hundred gigabytes worth of data. And by the middle of next year, we're expecting that to be quadruple uh, and 10 times the number of users. So it was really important for us to be on a system that we really didn't have to be paying attention 
need to. We want our resources deployed for our customers, yeah. not on our internal stuff. And from what I understand too, you're using like less horsepower on the autonomous data warehouse cloud, but you're still getting a 5X performance increase. Yeah, we're using half of the horsepower uh, in autonomous than we were on-prem. Uh, and, and it's been and pretty so, you know, 500% increase in yeah, exactly. amazing, that's great. Uh, FS, we can come back to you. So, you know, you mentioned how data is important to retail. We spoke about that before. And, and to your company and the decisions you make, uh, how do you bridge current and historical data with new data that you continue to collect and really combine it so you can get insights into all aspects of your business? Uh, that's a really good question and a, and a tough problem. So we're about 50 years old. Uh, Gap was one of the, the first and the leaders in e-commerce back in the early 2000s. So we have a lot of data about our customers, uh, about our stores, about um, our products, um, and you know every aspect of our business. And they're all unfortunately siloed in various forms of EDWs and, and things that we have that we built you know, over time, over decades. So we are working closely with Oracle, and Oracle is helping us figure out how we can take all that on-prem data and migrate it into one of your autonomous offerings so that we can bring it all in one place, and then we can analyze it and derive you know, insights and, and value out of it. Right. So we're really looking forward to Oracle helping us crack that right. nut. From what I understand, you have an active POC going today. Uh, talking about Teradata on-prem and what options Oracle has to move us off that into one of the cloud-based uh, solutions. Fantastic, that's yeah. great. Um, okay, let's come, you know, can you talk to us about business insights since we're sort of on data and analytics? I understand that's sort of critical to what you do. You know, what are the benefits you're seeing with respect to Oracle Autonomous Analytics and Cloud? Sure, so um, it's a loyalty solution, so it has to be driven, as I said earlier, by data. And, you know, it's, uh, it's not just the ability to get analytics out of a data warehouse, um, uh, but it's also the, the, the hope of predictive analytics what customer segments are going to respond well to offers based on you know, previous uh, uh, promotions or offers and things like that. So it's, it's about getting the right offers to the right, right members at the right time and, and, of course, doing it very efficiently and quickly. So that's what uh, autonomous um, uh, really, means, really means for us when it comes to analytics. That's great. That's great. Mark, um, so I know you've already seen some great results with respect to both the ease of the reporting as well as the faster time insights. You mentioned it briefly, but can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, the, the most interesting to, to me was the fact that we were able to deploy it very, very quickly. So it was a matter of, of minutes to get the, the database deployed, to get Analytics Cloud deployed. The migration itself only took a couple of days, and that was all the planning around it and, and the actual execution of it. So for us, you know, we were able to get what we thought was going to take several weeks to do. We wound up doing it in a few days, and that enabled us to really focus on the task of getting our data you know, where we wanted it to be, working on the dashboards and the reports, um, you know, not having to worry about the infrastructure or storage or, or anything else. Um, you know, so aside from the reporting and the, the time to migration, the ability to focus on you know, the task at hand, we know that we're not going to have to spend time administering. We're not going to have to spend time worrying about downtime for patching, worrying about secure, the security of our data. That's all going to be handled for us. You're also seeing the reporting getting completed in seconds versus minutes before. Yeah, absolutely. And that really encourages user adoption as well when they go in and they have a great user experience. Um, you know, that's something that's pretty key for us. Great. I mean, can we shift real quick to business continuity? I want to come back to you as well, Connie. You know, this is really important, you know, and especially how you deal with mission critical applications for your companies. Like, how does Autonomous Cloud help you address sort of the uptime and the business continuity? Well, I think one of the biggest things that we deal with, especially with the amount of ERP work that we do, is making sure that customers have a solution that they don't need to worry about if something happens to the data center or happens to the network or something, that there's an, an automatic solution for them to have deployed that they'll, that they'll get the level of uptime that they need. That's great. So, Connie, I know we've talked before about the importance of performance and scalability. It's critical to everything you do, especially with the sheer volume of business you support and these really tight SLAs you need to meet for the business. Mm -hmm. you know, can you tell us how machine learning and autonomous can really help you address that? Yeah, I think um, for our enterprise, we actually operate over 3,000 stores, 90 countries, uh, hundreds of franchisees, so we do move a lot of data. Uh, through our through our enterprise from the time that we're building and bringing goods into uh, our 
data warehouse, our warehouses and to the time that we're selling. So there's a lot of movement of information that we have to process through all of our applications. And so we have to do that on a timely basis so that we're able to provide that information to our business to make really relevant decisions in terms of how they manage that. Um, and then, of course, downstream and reporting and results and things of that nature. So the SLAs that we have to run across the platforms are really tight to be able to process and be able to get that information out to the business partners around the globe. The notion of being able to do that quicker with uh, performance and being able to manage that with autonomous, if we you know, get to that, we do work on Exadata, we're starting to move on to Exadata platforms, is really crucial to be able to optimize that capacity and that when do we have to process that data. And of course, it fluctuates in terms of what's happening, you know, peak season for retailers through the holiday seasons, yeah. data volumes increase, so we have to manage to those workloads. So being able to have something that can be ex uh, extendable and extensible to that uh, level would be really terrific for us. Yeah. And prior to autonomous database, you just have to build that all yourself. You have yourself. to build to the maximum, right? To, yeah. to the peak yeah. performance. Yeah, got it, that's great. David, I understand you know, scalability is pretty critical to your business as well, particularly loyalty, rewards. And can you tell us about how autonomous database enables that scale? And you have some specific examples. Yeah, sure, it's similar to what Connie was saying. Um, you know, it cuts a couple of different ways. First of all, you know, it's a new program, the network's growing, membership is growing, so we expect uh, transaction volume to be 50X what it is today, you know, in, into next year. And so, you know, and there's a, there's a wide range. Is it 30X, is it 100X? So you don't know exactly what to build to. Autonomous helps with that. We don't have to worry about it. We can focus on the business and getting to that 50X. That's one thing. Second thing is the nature of our business. Uh, there are promotions and campaigns, and some of them are very time boxed. Mm -hmm. So um, a funny example of that is uh, we have a great relationship with, uh, with the airline partner. Um, they're supportive of the program, and they decided to send an email introducing the program to millions of their members. And they sent, uh, I forget how many millions of emails in about 15 minutes. And so um, I heard, we, heard, we got some notice, some advance notice, that was good. Um, but I was actually on a plane, I had Wi-Fi, and was able to watch people move from the welcome page to enrollment, and then started seeing a bunch of APIs getting hit for enrollment into the program and saw numbers you know, move very quickly, and it handled it smoothly. Um, we were worried about it, but it gave us a lot of confidence um, that if we can handle that, we can handle a lot. Um, so that, anyway, those are those Autonomous are, helped enable that. Yeah, exactly. That's great. So there's another really critical part that Larry talked about with respect to the self-patching. FS wanted to talk to you about that and sort of that key category attribute. You know, with Gap, you know, with respect to self-patching, you know, how does this sort of technology help your team sort of addressing, you know, staying on the latest current rev, sort of protecting your environment? How do you view self-patching? Um, so I think Larry went through all the, the benefits of, of self-patching and, and auto-updating and all the other smarts that, that Oracle is putting in, into your database offerings. Um, so I'd like to address um, perhaps a slightly different point. So one reason we really appreciate Oracle's partnership uh, in these kind of programs is that Oracle is not just selling us this technology and saying, now your DBAs can go do higher level things and good luck training them and we'll see you next year. <laughs> Peace <laughs> but, out. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Oracle really has been a partner with us in helping us define what sort of education programs we need to upskill our workforce, what are some of the other transformation things that we need to put in place to take the same people who were doing the necessary but now mundane work of you know, OS patching, security patching, and all of that stuff. How do we take them, how do we transform them, how do we upscale them, so that they stay with us because they know our business inside out, they know how our company operates, they're extremely valuable members of our community, so we really do have to keep them and upskill them, and Oracle's been a great partner here That's fantastic. So it's helping you deal with that change management internally as well. It's people process tools, right? Yeah. So, you know, Larry talked about the technology portion, but until you take care of the people in the processes, I believe you can't really take advantage of all that, all that the technology is offering. That's fantastic. You know, Connie, we talked about self-patching, but, but Larry had also talked to self-driving, self-tuning, self-administration. You know, how, how do you sort of see the benefits of that and what you guys are trying to accomplish? 
Yeah, that has always been a challenge for us, right? Every time we try to enable new capabilities or patch or try to upgrade any of the application set, our teams always spend an enormous amount of time having to go back and do that kind of performance tuning to exactly what Larry was talking about, making sure those uh, queries and those uh, plans are executing at the highest performance. And so over time, that just becomes bigger and bigger workloads for our teams, and we can end up spending days and weeks um, trying to get to those uh, performance levels that we've already ex had or trying to exceed them. So being able to have uh, a database, an autonomous database that actually does that intuitively and innately will take a lot of that workload off our teams and just be a tremendous amount of uh, opportunity for us to repurpose those resources onto things that would be of higher quality and value for us. That's great, that's great. Yeah. Um, you know, Mark, to, to that end, and I think picking up on what FS had talked about, sort of the changing role of the DBA. I understand you employ hundreds of DBAs in your company. How do you see their role changing with Autonomous? Yeah, it's interesting. We, as a, as a company, have had a strategy for the last six or seven years that we wanted to move up the stack. So we started offering a lot more functional services and development services, enterprise architecture, and you know we're expecting that our staff is going to follow suit. So you know, there's there's opportunity to get more involved in data architecture and data integration, uh, cloud engineering, and things like that. That that I think are really going to keep things interesting for the folks who have those positions now. That's great. That's great. Uh, Dave, probably the last last question for you. You, you know do a lot of transaction processing in your world. You know, Larry talked about ATP. How do you see the business benefits of this new autonomous service offering? Yeah, it's a continuation of uh, the relationship with Oracle. It actually couldn't have come at a better time. It's interesting. Um, I agreed to participate in this before I really understood what uh, the uh, transaction processing piece was. We're already planning to move our transaction processing off rack space into the Oracle Cloud. Um, my assumption is we're gonna give this a very hard look. Um, uh, transaction processing at the end of the day is the uh, it's the lifeblood of our uh, of our business. That's great, FS. I know you rely on high performance transaction processing as well. You know, what's your reaction to the new announcement that Larry um, did for us earlier? So we, uh, you know, will also be taking a very hard look at this. Um, we are already, as Connie was saying, exploring exit data and some other options on the Oracle Cloud as it is. So we'll just continue down down that journey with Oracle and looking forward to. Good things to come. Great, thank you. Connie, last question for you. I know that expansion on the digital front is sort of paramount to what's on your mind, but at the same time, physical stores still are very important. It's about the right size, the right product mix. You're engaging in a social context with customers. Can you tell us about the future of retail and how you view Oracle helping to enable that? Yeah. The. Um you know, it'll always be about getting the right product onto our websites and into our stores, but the idea is how do we maximize that and, and leverage that to the fullest capabilities. And as I mentioned, things are changing in terms of how we engage with our customers. There's heightened expectation levels in terms of, you know, how we, how we work together and how we spend time together. There's things that we try to do that um, will help us engage with them in a deeper level, such as offering uh, store classes in our stores. We do things like that. We offer monogramming services, uh, personalization in terms of styling, things of that nature. So they become more and more important in terms of retailing, and, and it's more about that engagement with our customer and that, as I talked about, that seamless engagement. So we're looking to optimize our platform so that we're taking some of those resources, and rather than having to do those tasks that we've had to do in the past, we're able to leverage those, those teams and those resources to enable more of these capabilities on simplified and resilient and, uh, platforms that we want to continue to build out on and accelerate that. Right? That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you all four for joining us. Can you help me thank the panel? All right, got some already. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. That was awesome. It's always, it's always great to hear from them directly. And I think what we're seeing is that, you know, you know, autonomous database and Oracle Cloud are helping to drive real outcomes, you know, for both businesses and people. And that's really important as we move forward on this path to cloud. And again, you know, for us, and you know, again, providing a simple path to en enabling customers and all these emerging technologies is something that's really important to us. So again, for our existing customers, that path to autonomous could be as simple as an upgrade and again, for new customers, it's about a new platform 
that's an innovation platform that really spans all layers of cloud. You know, then once you're on that path, the autonomous opens up a world of possibilities. You can move from operations to innovation. It's what you just talked about. We can find new and better ways to develop, develop and deliver apps and services and real differentiated experiences. We can see the signals and predict outcomes. We talked about a predictive approach. Not only just getting questions to, uh, to answers you ask, but getting questions to answers the answers to questions you didn't even think to ask. And I think that's sort of the power of what we're talking about here. We can run our organization smarter, faster, more securely with scale. And ultimately we can reduce costs while at the same time reducing risk. That is what Autonomous provides. So we, and then I just say, you know, today we talked about these incredibly important milestones around Autonomous Database, but we've also announced several other autonomous services, app dev, mobility, blockchain, integration, analytics, security management. I see some of the team in the room. Siddhartha, I'll give you a shout out, what's going on? Again, and we have more coming as well. We're dedicated to this entire platform category and making it autonomous. And I encourage all of you who are tuning in or are here with us today, go start today. You can learn more at oracle.com slash autonomous database. You could try it, as Larry had said. We have a great trial right now, two terabytes of autonomous database free for 3,300 hours. Go check that out. And you can calculate the possible savings as well. I'd also encourage you, when Larry had talked about it, we'll have more to announce at Open World. We hope you'll all join us there. We'll have over 2,000 expert-led sessions on the possibilities with respect to autonomous, and we're gonna hear from many additional customers on the benefits they're seeing moving to Oracle Autonomous Cloud, and hope you guys will be able to join us there as well. So that's it, I really wanna thank you for your time today. You know, I think when you think about the transition to a modern cloud, you know, when you think about the future of data management and you think about Oracle, uh, think autonomous. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you so much.